welcome back. It's Terrific Tuesday, and uh, it was terrific in here on the commercial break. You had to see the mayhem that was going on. I apparently cited a meme that's been circulating on the web for two years, and I thought it was more current. And some of my staff pointed out that I'm a little behind the times, but we've already known that. Um, when you want to bring yourself right up to speed on everything great that's going on, you bring on the best guests. John Burnett, David Eisenbach, join us again to mix it up. Um, the first segment on gun rights, these guys really got into it. Um, but I want to just go to some of the stuff that's happening globally right now. Um, and the markets are getting rattled lately. They're getting knocked around below 27,000, threatening, you yeah. know, 26 and change. Um, it seems like Trump saying, hey, I'm putting in the tariffs, and China comes back and says, we're not budging. What, what, you come from the Wall Street world. What do you think? You know, I think that um, when you look at the last 40 years, Americans have been paying dearly for globalization in terms of loss of jobs, economic economic opportunities and President Trump is trying to bring it back. He's not going to bring it back easily. It's going to be a fight, right? And we've already seen China actually suffer great losses. They've already lost two million jobs. They're trying to devalue their currency. We're working on legislation, right, to penalize them for that as well. But we also seen major companies pull their supply chain out of China, go to Taiwan, Vietnam and other places. So China is paying dearly. The thing is, how long can they go before they'll say, you know what, let's call a truce? Right. The yeah, answer is they can go a lot longer <clears throat> than we can. They're a totalitarian society, right? Donald Trump's looking at a re-election campaign that's going to depend on that China deal being done to keep up the stock market, right? They, the last couple of days were a shot across the bat. When China devalued the yuan, they sent markets spinning, including our own, right? And basically, you got Larry Kudlow up there once again with his hands raised saying, oh, yeah, the Chinese your negotiations are going on. You might as well be saying we give up whatever you guys so want. So you think in the grand scheme of things, China can go longer than the U.S.? Of course. Of course. Like I said, it's totalitarian society, right? Donald Trump, he's going to get reelected if the market's above 30,000. If it's below 20,000, man, I think he's going to so lose. You think he knows anything, that. Anything above 25,000, he'll still be elected. But let's go back to China. When you look at uh, what has transitioned, what, how China has transitioned over the last 20 years, you know, President Xi does not want to lose power. How do you lose power? There's 400 million middle class Chinese as a result of, of China flirting with capitalism. They're used to that. They don't want to lose don't. that good life, so to speak. That's right. right. We already see what's happening with, in Hong Kong. The last thing China wants is an uprising in their own community. And, That's and the reason why they resisted capitalism on that for point, all those years. On that point, I want to swing over to Hong Kong. And Hong Kong, they're having all these protests because China is getting a little aggravated with their independence over there. And now they want to start, they want to start taking people and extraditing them back to the mainland to throw them in jail. And there are uprisings. What, what does that mean? you know, globally with these uprisings. Can they do anything, Hong Kong to China? No. When China wants to, they can just crush it. Uh, this is child's, you know, this is a game right here. Uh, they can crush it, and the whole world will remain silent, including Donald Trump, because everybody is afraid of China. What do you think, Johnny? You know, I, I don't, I'm not sure how China will actually play this out, because if they do take action, and it is bloody, then they're actually showing their hand that they're going back to the old China. And I don't think the European Union, I don't think Great Britain, because uh, hopefully it'll get Brexit pretty soon, and the U.S. will actually stand by and let that happen they'll in this new age economy. John, they'll stand by because they can't do anything about it. China can destroy us just by devaluating their yuan. That's a victim, stop buying that's a victim treasury bills mentality. and buying our debt, and they could destroy there are the American less economy. Th there are less developed nations, hence Taiwan, Vietnam, and other Southeast Asian countries that would love to be industrialized, would love the little taste of that capitalism, just like China got a little taste about 30 years ago. So let's not say it can never happen. Both Vietnam, Cambodia are under the umbrella of China. They are controlled, their political systems are controlled and by China. And strategically, that's why it makes sense. Right? To make sure that we can uphold capitalism worldwide Look, is to make I, sure that these small countries 
uh, get a get a uh, seat at the table and actually become more industrialized. That way that we can neutralize China's growth. Well, that was the idea behind Obama's uh, uh, treaty, uh, the TPP, right, which both Democrats and Republicans came out against, including Donald Trump. Let's look at where this is headed, all right? I think it's it's pretty obvious. We're going to sell them more soybeans and pork bellies. They're going to take control of 5G. They're going to control technology going forward. And we're going to become a third world sort of dependent, giving them agricultural supplies, right? So we'll be That's the, the final deal. Has he been speaking we'll, to we'll, Google? We'll, like, what's we'll going the, on? We'll be the farmer to China, <laughs> and they'll control the technology no, of the world. We'll, no, the they're idea. happy to allow us to, to raise the soybeans. But they will continue to steal our technology, which they have been for two decades. And we won't be able to say anything, because we sold out uh, to I completely disagree. It's no oh, really? longer going to be business as usual, and Donald, President Trump is actually stated that, and, and he's actually walking the walk, not just talking the talk. The, the, the final That's why tell, we need, we need we'll, more we'll time. See. Well, he's backed off the, uh, we're not, the whole five. We're not question. playing checkers anymore, man. We're playing chess. I want to look, I wanna, I wanna we'll bring it back to the homeland, and here's what Joe Biden had to say about all of this. Somewhere or another, he kind of got his lines down. Um, Joe Biden. Speaking about guns. This is a president who has said things no other president has said since Andrew Jackson. Nobody said anything like the things he's saying. And the idea that it doesn't contribute to or legitimate or make it more rational for people to think that we, in fact, can now speak out. We can speak out and be more straightforward and we can make this an issue. We've been through this before. We've been through this before in, in, the, in, in the 20s with the Ku Klux Klan, 50,000 people walking down Pennsylvania Avenue in pointed hats and their robes because they, in fact, decided they didn't want any Catholics coming into the country. He's basically saying, final minute, guys, give me both your, your thought. He's basically saying that you can't totally blame Trump for this stuff, Biden. He's saying, you know, there's other, you know, what do you think, Dave? Uh, that, that all of America's problems can't be blamed on Donald Trump. Yeah, obviously, that's the case. Uh, unfortunately, we got so many Democrats ding, 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 ding. who want to blame uh, Trump for long-term uh, problems that are the responsibility of both Democrats and Republicans, including our failure to control Giant guns. 30 seconds, final thought. Look, Vice President Biden understands the numbers in this case. Since 1966, up until uh, Obama took uh, office, we had 24 mass shootings. Under Obama, that he had 24 alone. So he understands this firsthand. He understands that it's a growing problem that you cannot blame on any particular president, but it, there's been a huge spike since 2008. All so right. we do have to take action. We got to do something about it. John Burnett, David Eisenberg.